Next, we'll see how to make use of Android debug monitor, device monitor. So Android device monitor is a standalone tool that you can install and get the heap, heap data, thread data, CPU data about your device or the emulator. So you can see it starts and shows a lot of windows and views. There are threads, heap, allocation tracker, network as, as statistics, file explorer, emulator control, system information. So going by the system information, you can see the CPU load on your device. Right now, all these, all these uh, on the right side, you can see com, Google, Android, persistent, com, Google, Android, GPS. So these are the processes that are making use of CPU. You can see the memory usage by each app, unknown, free, buffers, inactive, slabs. I can update the latest information. Frame render time. So right now we don't have any app that makes use of uh, graphics. So if you're using, developing any games, you can make use of frame render time. This is the phone name on the left side. You can see left top devices list. So if you have more than one devices, uh, number of devices will uh, come as a tree. If I want to debug this particular application, you can see all the top icons on the ref. Debug icon is on the green, debug the selected process. Clicking on this will start the debugger. Heap, update heap. Update heap icon helps you get the heap details which is allocated to your app. Since your every app in Android, every application runs in a separate process, and each application is given a heap uh, memory, which is allocated and used. So I can click on update heap, and I go to heap. Say cos GC. GC stands for garbage collector. Once I cause the garbage collector, I can see this is the heap size that was allocated to my app. This is what this is how much I have used. Nine and nine point eight four MB is eight one MB is used. Free is six point five MB percentage used and total number of objects. Note that libraries, all the third party libraries and all the integration libraries that you use in your project will add to the heap. So make sure whatever libraries you use in your app are clean and neat and do not overuse the libraries. Do not overuse the Android APIs. You have to be extremely cautious in using the libraries and the APIs because the app may crash because, because the app may crash since it's running in an embedded environment. Finally, threads. If you have number of threads that are running in your application, you can get list of all the threads that are currently running or waiting in your application. See Chrome DB thread, IoT thread. So this Chrome stands for uh, web browser uh, threads, which are uh, used by Facebook SDK. Async tasks that were run in the background and you can see all the calls. File Explorer gives you a good overview of all the data in your phone. In case you are saving any data in the SD card, you can use File Explorer to see whether the data is saved properly and you can browse through the data. I can check the SD card, storage or any other files on the system. This helps in debugging and uh, this helps in debugging and finding out if the files are cached properly or if the files are downloaded properly in your app. In, in case you're running your app in the emulator, this section is enabled and you can fake the GPS locations, send it to the emulator or fake some incoming calls and voice and SMS, telephony statuses. This emulator control view is used only if you're testing an emulator. Ideally, it's recommended that you test your application in real device before shipping it. It's always recommended to test the, test the application on various devices, from small range devices to high-end devices, so that the app runs seamlessly on all the devices without any issues. 
and profiling should be done for each and every phone so that your app is safe and it's guaranteed to run on all the devices without any hiccups. Hope this uh, video was useful to you. Thank you.